Good day, everyone, and a welcome to Sir Carl Easy Math. Today, we'll be talking about another topic in Mathematics 8. This time, let's have the quarter four, week four, entitled Determining Parallel and Perpendicular Lines. All right, so let's get it on. For the most essential learning competency, that is, determine the conditions under which lines and segments are parallel or perpendicular with the code M8GE-IVE-1. All right. Our learning objectives today, that is to identify the different relationship among angles formed when parallel lines are cut by transversal. Second, we have determined the conditions under which lines and segments are parallel or perpendicular. Third, display perseverance while doing the task. And fourth, solve the assessment with honesty and truthfulness. All right, so hopefully we could um, achieve all these learning objectives as we try to go along with our discussion today. Okay, so for the intro introductory activity before we start with our um, lesson prepper i want you um, viewers uh, especially to my students in grade 8 class i want you to prepare your math 8 quarter 4 week 4 module we need that one because that is our topic today i want you to have with you also the pen or ball pen or pencil and please prepare also papers, uh, scratch papers, because we'll be solving uh, some items later on. And uh, all the things that we need for our discussion today. And also, I want you to uh, make sure that you are sitting uh, comfortably um, with your chair and table there uh, at home. And I want you to sit properly and be ready for the class. Okay, let's proceed. For the first activity, okay, I want you to um, go over to your module on pages four and five. Uh, you can see there the what I know part of your module for Mathematics 8, quarter four, week four, uh, determining parallel and perpendicular lines. That is actually a pre-test. I want you to take note of the questions uh, in each item, uh, make sure to answer that one first before we proceed with our um, discussion. And uh, I want you to uh, be familiar with the different questions on the item. You could pause the video uh, while answering it and uh, just play it after you answer your um, pre-test, uh, probably for about three to five minutes, okay? so. Let us now proceed with the second um, activity. The second activity is a crossword puzzle. So I know you're very familiar with the crossword puzzle. In your English class, you have a lot of crossword puzzles. Okay, basically uh, that is uh, for you to identify um, the word that is uh, being asked by the, by the statement or, or the question that is given to you, either across or down. Okay, so we need to just um, identify what are the words or word that are being asked. Okay, so for the first one, uh, that is across an angle which measures 90 degrees. All right, so when you were in grade seven, um, in fourth quarter as well, uh, you have discussed already, uh, there is an uh, introduction already on what are the different terms that uh, we would uh, be uh, coming across when we talk about perpendicular and uh, parallel lines. So, uh, let's see. An angle which measures 90 degrees. Uh, what do you think is that? I know you know it. All right. That is right angle. And you're right. Okay, so let us now proceed. That's number two. Let us now proceed with number three, still, across uh, the uh, horizontal word. Okay, so that is uh, somewhere here. Okay, line that intersects two or more lines. Again, line that intersects two or more lines. What do we call that one? 
All right, of course, that is transversal. All right, very good. Okay, next, we have number four here. You can see here there are boxes there, uh, probably the, these two words, okay? Two non-adjacent exterior angles on opposite sides of a transversal. What do you think is that word? Okay, that is alternate exterior angles. Okay, next. Let's have, all right, number five. Lines that intersect to form right angles. Okay, so they intersect to form right angles. What do you think is that lines? They are called perpendicular lines. Very good. Okay, next. Number six. Okay. Two non-adjacent interior angles on opposite sides of the transversal. Again, two non-adjacent interior angles on opposite sides of the transversal. What do you think is that one? All right, that is alternate interior angles. Okay, so we have alternate exterior angles. We also have the alternate interior angles. Okay, and that is two non-adjacent interior angles on opposite sides of the transversal. So they are not on the same side, right? Of course. Next, another one. Uh, number seven. These are coplanar lines that do not intersect. Take note. Coplanar lines that do not intersect. We call that one? Of course. We call that one parallel lines. All right. And then uh, there is one, one word left. Again, that is one, and a word is going uh, down. All right. What is the definition? Okay. For number one, that is two non-adjacent angles, one interior and one exterior on the same side of transversal. Okay. This is very interesting. What do we call two non-adjacent angles, one interior and one exterior on the same side of transversal? What do you think is that one? Okay, you get it right. We call that one corresponding angles. And again, we call that one corresponding angles. All right, so let's now proceed. So based on the lines there, and uh, based on the different terms and uh, uh, definitions, okay, what do we call again? The line that intersects Two or more lines. It starts with letter T. Right, very good. We call that one transversal. Don't forget the word. Okay, transversal. It is a line that cut that intersects two or more lines or cut two or more lines. All right. Number two. What are the angles formed by the transversal with two other lines? Again, what are the angles formed by the transversal with the two other lines? What was that again? We call it one exterior and interior angles. Okay, right. Uh, in our crossword puzzle, you see there that there are interior angles, of course, the angles inside the parallel lines, and we have the exterior angles from the word itself. Uh, exterior, those are the angles that are outside, okay? The parallel lines. Okay, next question. What are the pairs of angles that formed by the transversal with the other two lines? Okay, this time, pair of angles. So these are, these are uh, two angles this time, okay? So when, a, when lines are cut by the transversal, Okay, we can have uh, another pairs of angles like corresponding angles. We have alternate interior and uh, exterior angles. We also have interior or exterior angles, same side of the transversal. So take note of those different angles. Um, anyways, we're going to discuss that one later on when we reach with our um, obstruction. Okay, so again, those are corresponding angles alternate interior angles or alternate exterior angles. 
we have interior angles, same side of transversal, and we also have exterior angles, same side of um, transversal. So those are the different pairs of angles that uh, we can uh, form, okay, uh, when, a, when two lines are cut by a transversal. Okay, next, when can we say that the two lines are parallel? All right, very good. Two lines are parallel if and only if they are coplanar and they do not intersect, okay? So take note of that one. This is biconditional. There are two things that we need to consider, okay? If we say that two lines are parallel. First one, make sure that they are coplanar, meaning to say they are on the same plane, okay? The same surface. And they do not intersect, okay? Uh, being coplanar, um, that is something that uh, we we forget often, all right? Because when we say, when, when we are being asked what are parallel lines, we just simply say lines that do not intersect, okay? But take note, there are lines actually that uh, do not intersect, okay? But they are not on the same plane and they are not parallel. So, Two, two things that we need to consider. If two lines are parallel, first, they should be coplanar. Second one, they do not intersect. Take note of that one. Um, pass. All right, next. When can we say that two lines are perpendicular? All right, this time, when can we say that two lines are perpendicular? Okay, so basically... Oops. Right. We can say the two lines are perpendicular when the two lines intersect with each other to form right angles. Okay, so uh, those are the conditions in which we can consider that the lines are perpendicular. Don't worry, because later on I will be discussing to you what are the different uh, conditions okay, in determining um, the lines, if they are parallel or perpendicular. Okay, let's proceed. So let us now move on to the lesson proper. Uh, I'm going to talk here. I'm going to explain uh, what are parallel lines and what are the conditions and uh, what are perpendicular lines and uh, what are the conditions as well as the different theorems that uh, we can ha have in, in this, in this uh, topic. So parallelism. Two lines are parallel if and only if they are coplanar. Uh, I just explained that one. And they do not intersect. So example, A with um, two bars there, uh, B, that is read actually as line A is parallel to line B. So basically you could see there the line A. And uh, you could see there line B here. And uh, there is a transversal. Okay, so line A and line B is cut by a transversal, that is line C. And if you notice, um, we have uh, eight angles that are being formed. Actually, we have angle one, angle two, angle three, angle four. We have uh, five and six here, and we have seven and eight. All right, so again, take note of that one. Two lines are parallel if and only if they are coplanar and they do not intersect all right okay next second one a line that intersects two or more lines is called a transversal all right so we have here um, line c okay this is line c there and uh, that is our uh, transversal okay so the angles formed by a transversal with the two other lines are called we have exterior angles and uh, interior angles. In the figure, you can see there um, exterior angles. Uh, we have angle one and two. Uh, they are the angles that are outside the two lines that are parallel here, which is A and uh, B, right? So angle one and angle two on the at the bottom we have angle seven and um, angle eight. So they are called exterior angles. Okay. And for the interior angles, these are the angles actually that are um, inside, okay? 
that are inside the, the parallel lines, uh, line A and line B. So we have uh, angle three here. We also have angle four. We have um, angle five and we have um, angle six. Great. So if two lines are cut by transversal, we have um, eight angles, uh, four exterior angles and four interior angles. All right. So this time, pairs of angles. So the pairs of angles formed by the transversal with the other two lines are called, so we have uh, corresponding angles. All right. So where are corresponding angles here? One exterior and one interior on the same side. That's the definition given. Uh, a while ago, right, in our uh, crossword puzzle. So uh, corresponding ang angles, one exterior, that is angle one, paired with angle five, one interior, on the same side of the transversal. We have also two and um, six. We have, um, we have three and seven, and we also have four and, uh, we have four and eight. Okay, so there are four pairs, actually, of um, corresponding angles. Next, we have the um, alternate interior angles. So the inside angles, but they are alternate. They are located on the uh, opposite sides of the transversal. So we have angle 3 paired with angle 6, and we also have angle 4 paired with angle 5. Okay, so we have two pairs of alternate interior angles at the same time we also have two pairs of alternate exterior angles we have um, angle one and um, angle eight and we have um, angle two and um, angle seven okay so those are the alternate interior angles and exterior angles next um, we have the interior angles on the same side of the transversal so interior angles so both of them are inside the parallel and uh, they are both of them also are on the same side. So we have three and five, and we have four and six. So these are called uh, interior angles on the same side of the transversal. At the same time, we have exterior angles on the same side of the transversal. So we have one and seven, and we have two and eight. Okay, so make sure that uh, you are familiar already with the different pairs of angles because that is uh, really very important when we try to solve uh, problems involving parallel and uh, perpendicular lines uh, later on, okay? Next, uh, this time we're, we're going to talk about the different conditions that um, guarantee that lines are parallel, okay? So uh, there are actually six okay, conditions that we can say that uh, lines are parallel. If they are cut by transversal. So let's try to read number one. All right. If two coplanar lines are cut by transversal and a pair of alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So we could say converse of alternate interior angles theorem. So as you could see here, angle three, and uh, we have um, angle six here. Measure, me, the measure of angle three is 80 degrees, the measure of angle six is 80 degrees. So they are alternate interior angles. So as shown, the pair of interior angles are congruent. So therefore, um, line M is parallel to line N. All right. That is converse of alternate interior angles theorem. So if we could prove that um, the alternate interior angles are congruent, if they are congruent, then we could say that the lines cut by the transversal is also parallel. Do you understand? So that is the converse alternate interior angles theorem. So for the alternate interior angles theorem, if two lines are parallel, then their alternate interior angles are congruent. So take note of that one. Right. So if measure of angle 3 is 80 degrees, then measure of angle 6 should be 80 degrees since alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay, take note of that one. Next, number two. All right, let's try to read. If two coplanar lines are cut by transversal and a pair of alternate exterior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. That is also the converse of alternate exterior angles theorem. Okay, so this time the alternate exterior angles. As you can see, uh, measure of angle one 
is uh, the air. Measure of angle, angle 1 is 110 degrees. So measure of angle 8 is 110 degrees as well. Since, since, since they are congruent. Okay. Therefore, line M is parallel to line M. All right. So it suggests that if we could prove that if alternate exterior angles are congruent, then the two lines, line M and line N, are parallel lines. Take note of that second condition. Next, number three. If two coplanar lines are cut by transversal and a pair of corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. Okay, so as you can see there, uh, angle 1 and angle 5 actually are pairs of corresponding angles, right? One exterior, one interior on the same side of the transversal. Again, we defined that one already a while ago. We call that one corresponding angles, right? And we could say that line M and line N are parallel to each other, right? Okay, so angle 1 and angle 5, if they are congruent, then the lines must be parallel. All right, that's condition number three. Let's go to the next one. Number four, if two coplanar lines are cut by transversal so that the interior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary, take note of that one, then the lines are parallel, converse of same side interior angle theorem. Okay, so this time we have here angle three and angle five. They are both interior angles on the same side of the transversal and they are supplementary meaning to say uh they their angles are equal to 180 degrees if you try to sum it up or if you add the two angles it would be equal to 180 degrees okay and if they are supplementary then the line then the line m and n the lines m and n are parallel right okay so take note of that one okay angle three and angle five are interior angles on the same side of the transversal since they measure 180 degrees then the line then the lines m and n also are parallel all right don't be confused about that one right it's very clear next number five uh, this is the fifth condition okay if two coplanar lines are cut by transversal so that the exterior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary, then the lines are also parallel. Converse of the same side, this time, exterior angle theorem. Uh, the fourth condition is all about interior angle. The other one is uh, exterior, e interior angle. The other one is exterior angle. So this time, it's exterior angle exterior angle theorem so we have angle one here and um, angle seven so if they are supplementary with each other then we could conclude that lines m and n are parallel okay so that is the converse of the same side exterior angle theorem all right the last one the sixth um, condition for uh, parallelism if two coplanar lines are perpendicular to the same line, then they are parallel to each other. So the example shown here, we have line M and line N cut by a transversal O. And if you notice, uh, the square or the, the box here uh, indicates that uh, they form right angles, 90 degrees, okay? So both lines M and N are perpendicular to line O. Therefore, we can conclude that a line lines M and N are parallel. All right, if they are perpendicular to the two lines. Okay, and those are the different conditions on parallelism. Okay, so I hope you get it all anyways you can uh, the, the good thing here is that we, this is a video lesson so you could always uh, rewind go back to the things that uh, somehow you are confused and uh, you can uh, play pause uh, rewind okay and uh, if you want more time or if I if I am going too fast okay you can just uh, review it okay uh, anytime
at your convenience. Okay, next, let's now go to perpendicularity. So we defined that one earlier, that uh, when two lines intersect to form right angles, uh, we call the one perpendicular lines. Okay, so when two lines intersect to form right angles, the two lines are said to be perpendicular to each other. As shown here in uh, our figure, we have line M and uh, line N. They meet at P and uh, they form right angles. So they are actually uh, said to be perpendicular to each other. In the figure to the right, line M and line N and line N intersect at point P, so the center one, uh, we have line P, so line M, and uh, we have here line N, uh, they intersect at point P, okay, and they form a uh, right angle, so it measures 90 degrees. So we can therefore say that line M is perpendicular to line N. So in symbols, you can see that one, M is perpendicular to N, or line M is perpendicular to N. Uh, the symbol for the the symbol for the uh, perpendicular is uh, somehow a reverse uh, capital T, right? So take note of that one. Okay, so that's the condition of uh, perpendicularity. Right, okay, so let's try to move on. Uh, the following are conditions which show the two lines are perpendicular. Number one, so I believe there are about five conditions, right, uh, in which we could say that the two uh, lines are perpendicular. Let's have number one. If two coplanar lines intersect and form four right angles, then the lines are perpendicular. So as you can see in the example there, line M uh, intersects, uh, line M intersects line N at point P, All right? So they form four right angles. We have angle one here, uh, quadrant two, angle two and quadrant uh, one. Angle four here, okay, in quadrant uh, four and uh, angle three on quadrant three, okay? So remember that the small square in the figure indicates that the given angle is a right angle. So it's the symbol. The small square actually is the symbol for right angle. So again, if two lines intersect and they form right angles, they form four right angles, okay? They are perpendicular to each other, right? Next. Number two, second condition. If two coplanar lines intersect and form congruent uh, linear pair of angles, then the lines are uh, perpendicular. Okay, so as, as you could see there, okay, we have their linear pair is a pair of adjacent angles when two lines intersect. And it is always supplementary. 90 plus 90, of course, that is 180 degrees. And if it's 180 degrees, uh, that measures, um, of course, uh, 180 degrees, and they're called supplementary. All right. So they form linear pair. Okay. Next, number three. If a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, then it is perpendicular to the other. So as, as shown in the example here, again, it was it is a condition also in uh, parallel lines, right? So if two lines, line N and line O, cut by a transversal line M, and it, they are perpendicular to the two lines, uh, then uh, it is perpendicular to the other as well. Okay? So next, number four. If two angles are adjacent and none, I don't know. If two angles are adjacent and complementary, their non-common sides are perpendicular. All right. So if two angles, uh, two adjacent angles form 90 degrees, of course, they're done common sides. In this example shown here, we have angle a, uh, no, side AB and side BC. Okay. They are the non-common sides. And of course, they will be perpendicular. So they will measure 90 degrees. That's a fourth condition. There are four conditions, actually, uh, when we try to talk about... Um, perpendicularity so for again uh a recap for for parallel parallelism we have uh, six conditions okay um, we could just uh, review the video and uh, you could actually read also your um, modules uh, part of our week for determining parallel perpendicular lines for the perpendicularity we also have four conditions okay 
So try to read uh, again and again so that you could fully understood um, the different okay, conditions when we try to have um, parallel lines and uh, perpendicular lines. All right. So let's see if we could apply now uh, the different okay, theorems, different conditions of parallel and perpendicular lines okay, with uh, some of the activities. This time, uh, let's try to answer the what's more part on your um, module, still found in your module, because uh, what we discuss here are, all, uh, are things that are found in your uh, module, of course, okay? So we made this uh, video lesson uh, specific, specifically for you guys so that uh, somehow there is uh, someone, okay, especially um, uh, your advisor, your teacher, your subject teacher in Mathematics 8, that can somehow explain, okay, uh, what are the things that are uh, inside your modules and so that you could uh, understood also. Okay, so this, this video lesson is just uh, supplementary um, for you to be able to uh, have a more, okay, so that you could gain more understanding on the lessons that you are uh, studying, there. especially you are just at home and if you don't have a home tutor or you are just uh, answering it alone, or you're doing some self-study. So hopefully this video lesson will help you out. All right, let's try to apply what we have learned. Okay, um, what's more part on your uh, module quarter four, week four? Let's have, uh, supposedly it is in, uh, independent activity, but uh, I'm gonna answer this one. There, uh, This is just letter A, we have letter B, letter C, you answer the remaining activities, but uh, I'm gonna answer this uh, letter A uh, for you to uh, somehow uh, get idea on how to answer the uh, next activities, okay? So let's read the directions first. Give the measure of um, angle one so that line A will be parallel to line B. So write the correct answer on a super shade of paper, but this time you could write your answer on your modules. Okay, are we cool? All right, well, I'm going to explain one by one. Okay, let's have number one. So as you can see here, uh, it is given actually the line A is uh, parallel to line B cut by transversal um, line C. Okay, so as you can see here, they are actually um, alternate interior angles, right? As you can see there. All right, so take note that if lines are parallel, then their interior angles are congruent. Now, since they're congruent, then the measures should be equal. So what is the measure of angle one? Of course, measure of angle one is 65 degrees since they are congruent to each other. Alternate interior angles are congruent to each other. The reason, alternate interior angles theorem, right? Okay, next for number two, as you can see there, uh, angle one and here, uh, which measures 120 degrees, they are, if you can notice, the angles actually actually are alternate exterior angles. And uh, what can we say about alternate exterior angles? They are also, that's right, they are congruent. So if, if this angle here measures 120 degrees, so the measure of angle one must be 120 degrees as well, since they are congruent and they must be equal. All right, what's the reason? Alternate exterior angles theorem states that if two angles all right, are, if two lines are parallel cut by transversal, their exterior angles are congruent. So they must have the same measure. Let's have number three. So same thing with number one, uh, this time on the other side, um, we have alternate interior angles. And again, they are congruent. So measure of angle one must be 100 degrees, okay? Measure of angle one must be 100 degrees. And uh, the reason for that one, alternate interior angles theorem, we, we just apply, okay? When two lines are parallel, cut by transversal, their interior angles are congruent. So 100 degrees, measure of angle one is 100 degrees. Let's have number four. All right, this time, uh, if you could notice there, the uh, angle one and uh, 130 degrees there, they are actually inside. So they are interior angles, same side of the transversal. 
And we know that one earlier that they are supplementary. And if they are supplementary, they measure in total 180 degrees. So if we have 130 degrees already, 180 degrees minus 130 degrees, the measure of angle one must be 50 degrees. Okay, you get that one? All right. So measure of angle 150 degrees plus the other interior angles here, which measures 130 degrees, they are equal to 180 degrees. And the reason for that one is same side interior angles theorem. If two lines are parallel cut by the transversal, their interior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary. Take note of that one. And number five, this time, uh, for number four, we have interior angles. This time, we have the exterior angles. So, same thing. Measure of angle one here must be 100 degrees. Reason for that one, same side. Exterior angles theorem, it states that if two lines are parallel, cut by transversal, their exterior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary. So angle one, 100 degrees, and we have one, we have 80 degrees here. We have a total of 180 degrees since they are supplementary. So you get it? I know you get it, All right? So again, you could just um, uh, review by, you know, going back or uh, have a replay or try to watch over and over again uh, about the different explanations that we had in the abstraction part, in the uh, application part, in, in, in the crossword uh, puzzle, and uh, every part of this uh, uh, video lesson, okay? So I hope, guys, that uh, you learned something uh, today, especially on the different um, conditions in determining parallel lines and uh, perpendicular lines, okay? So I believe now that um, you could answer your uh, assessment part I will discuss the answer for this assessment part uh, probably in the next video lesson that uh, we will be having. But uh, today, I want you to, to answer it on your own. Uh, on your module on pages uh, 13 to 15, you can see there the assessment part. Uh, 10 items. Uh, I want you to answer that one um, uh, honestly. Okay? And uh, try to answer it uh, on your own. Okay? So anyways, while answering that one, you could just uh, go back and uh, play it again, all right? Um, for those who have uh, access to the internet, you could uh, watch these video lessons on uh, YouTube. Uh, for those who don't have access and uh, if you have uh, cell phones or laptops, I could uh, give you copies for this one. And uh, for those who are very far uh, from our school and uh, who don't have actually internet, I could uh, give you my um, slide deck uh, so that you could uh, try to read there because uh, I have a detailed okay, uh, answers and solutions, explanations to all the things that we have uh, discussed right now. Okay, uh, I also have a, a, a strategic intervention um, a material for you guys, for those who can um, access this one. Okay, so we have a lot of um, solutions actually to, to every problem, right? So if you noticed actually um, at the bottom of my uh, slide deck is a bridge, okay? So and if you noticed uh, with a bridge, okay, um, there are, you could see parallel lines and uh, perpendicular lines actually. Right, so this video lesson is actually inspired by the Dep Ed, Ed Tech Unit, uh, which is uh, they call the program E to Light. That is basically to bridge, okay, okay, to bridge the teachers and uh, and the students. Okay, we are in this pandemic time and we don't have a chance to have a face to face classes, but we are making things we are making solutions and this video lesson is one of the solutions you not know, to bridge the students and the teachers so that um we can uh, still learn because 
uh, we believe that uh, learning must continue even in this crisis, in this uh, trying times that we are all experiencing right now. So I hope you are all good there at home. Uh, stay safe, everyone. Okay. And uh, basically, you could uh, answer the additional activities on page 15 on your um, module. And uh, before I leave, before I end this video lesson, I'm trying to make a, a code which relates to parallel and perpendicular lines. Let me just read to you. Sometimes we are parallel with our notions. We have the same directions. Sometimes we are perpendicular with our actions. We have opposite reasons. However, like lines, we grow infinitely in our own little way. Thank you very much for watching till the end. I really appreciate it. And I hope every one of us is uh, still um, healthy. And um, you have a good one. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye. <laughs>